Hello, this is Christian. So in this video, we're going to continue from where we left off in class um, with I did not get to finish this Ajax uh, function here, okay? So I just basically copied everything over. I made some tiny changes here in the HTML. I'm using a different jQuery library, but it's the same thing. I also added a uh, style sheet and I also share that with you as well. It's just a really simple one, you know, kind of, you know, style the font size and add some comments. I'm going to style this box right here for the comments. Also giving some margin for the input. So give some space here or not. Okay. So nothing too much here. Now, um, make sure that the backend is running. So on the backend server, we have a model that looks like this. So this form here will, you know, create something kind of similar to this. The author name, date, and the comment. And then the ID here. Uh, if you remember, we talked about in class that we're not going to include it here. We're going to let the server side generate that for us. Okay, so um, that's what happened. Um, one thing I want to change is right here. This URL, I usually don't like to do this. So we're going to cut that out and put it somewhere up here. Like uh, maybe uh, cons URL equals that string. Okay, and then we're going to um, put that right in here. So URL plus that comment. So we're going to use it again later in the future. Okay. So the data type, we already created that here. Looks good to go. The um, the type is going to be a post. And if it's successful, this function will fire. If it's, there's an error, this will fire. So that's the error first. Put E here for error or error like that, right? Receive it. And we can do a um, console log, like that error. And then we can, if you want to see what the error is, we can then just put a comma and then put the error like that. I think, yeah, we'll see if there's any error, okay? Otherwise, if it's successful, we're gonna fire this function here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna, uh, in the back, if you remember the back end uh, code looks like this, we're gonna submit the form to this destination. We're gonna get the ID from the body if there's any, any or not. If you don't have it, we're gonna call this generate function down here to generate a random number between um, up to a th 9,000 or something. And then we're gonna, um, you can log this, you can see I add it so you can see the body. If you don't need to see that, you can just turn that off. And then we're gonna actually, um, what I'm missing here is, I'm not sure what happened here. Uh, I'm gonna comments, I'll probably do something. I'm gonna push the rec body to that list, okay? I'm gonna push it to this comments list. So this comment originally has about um, 10 of them. And every time I'm gonna keep adding that to the list. And then we're gonna send that same content right back. This is coming from the form, going to the server. We add the ID to it and send it right back. And when it comes back over here, so we can add some data here. So the data coming back to the successful function will be right in here. We put a new comment. It's really just this new comment here. Okay, so what do we do here? I'm gonna go ahead and target this in the HTML, this uh, div tag right here, and put the information here. So what I need here is like this. I need to add, uh, what should we put there? Um, I would do something like this. So every comment will lose something like this. Put a div tag. Inside a div tag, I need a paragraph. In the paragraph, I'll put um, maybe strong, and I'll put here, for example, the author, okay, followed by, Maybe, um, I don't know, the date. Okay, the date goes right here, okay? And it's put here so you can see it. And then below here, I have a paragraph and I put the actual comment right here. Okay, so the author comment. And then I'm gonna style this div tag uh, using a class called a comment. I mean, there's so many comments here. This comment here is, as you can see, it's already, it's already styled, it's, it's bold. Basically, just this, comment. I'm basically, um, I make it bold here. I could combine this together, but that's okay. So I'll make it bold. And then that's all I need for this one here. Okay. So everyone, I want to add something is going to add it, push it to this list here. Okay. So now I'm going to copy this over, cut that out and go back to my Ajax and put it right in here. Okay. And this is going to be my string. So I need to have a, um, I'll put here that comment. HTML is equal to that. And I use the back tick to set everything in the way I had earlier. 
So it pushes two over like that, makes it nice. And there we go. That's my string. I built that and then at its place, um, the I'm, I also want to add an ID here. Um, the comment will be like comment one, comment two. So I want to add here a um, a dash and then, no, I'm sorry, ID here. It's equal to, um, put it here, the comment, like dash one, dash two, and so forth. So I'll put a dollar sign here for your, the new comment, that ID. This ID is coming back from the, the backend, okay? So this is, is you make it unique, basically, it's all. And then the content, this is the author. So put here, new comment, that author. Early, I'm using text interpolation. This is the actual date. So replace that with new comment dot uh, date. All right. And those will be, you know, pre-populated. And then down here is the comment. So new comment dot comment. Here we go. That is the one I need to do. And then when I push it to that, you know, uh, comment. So here it's the destination. It's going to go to the comment. That ID here is this ID right here. Well, actually, it's plural. Comments is comments. And then I'm going to append to this the comment HTML. Okay. Remember, again, if you pass data to it, it's a setter. If you leave nothing, pass nothing, it's a getter. So I'm going to put a getter here. Right, and then once I'm done, I'm gonna clear my form. Okay, so I wanna see if this actually works. So let's run the admin uh, backend first. I'm gonna go right here, right click on it, open in the terminal, and then just type node index. Okay, I port 9000, I copy that over, and uh, you should see it, but you don't have to you know, check it. So now it should work if successful. I'm gonna close this now. I'm gonna do something here, so some tests like Christian, Chris is fine, and hi, hello, boom, right? You see there, right? It goes back to the server, comes right back, and we have a new comment added there, right? But then you see that the, the comment is still here. I want to clear this one every time when I add it. Add another one, you can see it keeps adding, we keep building that list right here, okay? How do we know if the ID is actually working or not? Well, you can, you know, uh, view in the DOM. This one, I can't do it, but you can log out to see, you can see it right here. So for example, I want to see ID just in case, right? Um, I put it here. I wanna, I'm going to delete it, but I just, I just put it so you can see. So new comment, that ID, like that, right? If I do it like this, boom. So this ID of 4514, and then a different ID, right? So pretty cool, huh? So leave that out. I know that's working, so great. I want to clear this. After I add that to the list, oops, I'm going to go ahead and target that form. This is the uh, common form, right? This one right here. Copy this. Go down here, say some typing. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, trigger what's called a reset. This is a function called trigger. And then I'm going to basically call the reset function. So you know how you have a form, you have a clear, clear button, you click a clear and everything just wipe out. This is what it, that's basically what it does. This form here triggers will invoke a function called reset and it will reset that. So for example, if I type something like this, I click submit, boom, it clears that, adds it to the back end and so forth. Okay, so that is basically it for this one. Very simple, a note here, clear form. Um, and that's how you build this kind of blog, okay? Um, I'll do one more down here for, uh, let's say if, the, if there's any error. I mean, I don't have that thing here, but um, we can also display the error just so we can see it, if there's any or not. I put here uh, comments. I put here uh, append or uh, not. I'm gonna put HTML error. If I have any error. So for example, if I go ahead and put like, um, I don't know, a port number like that. Okay. And see what happens. Okay. That didn't take it. Uh, something happened. <laughs> Let's see if I do like, if I have something back in, you know, it's, it's incorrect in the back end, I suppose. Um, 
but we should catch error down here. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, I want to load all the data back uh, to this blog up here. And it just for comments, you know, for um, something kind of interesting. So when I do the get, you see a get request to load this link to this API. And we're going to get all the data coming back. Okay. So this is already working. We saw that already. It's going to come back. You see that the, the way I have it exactly the same what it has. I should just copy this basically. This is exactly what I have over here, right? I, I forgot that I actually had that already. And then I'm going to call a function down here. And the function is basically it's going to just see if it's inside. Okay, outside the comment. Okay, right here is fine. I'll just do it here for now. I'll call a function and we load comment. And I'm going to have it so it will automatically load this comment, you know, every, I don't know, three or five seconds or not. Um, okay, so let's just say that I'm going to do the get request. Okay, notice I did not have to go through a, um, the Ajax at all. I could also do this. Um, put the URL plus the destination is comments. Okay, this is uh, another way to do it, okay? This is... Um, when I get that, then I'm going to call a callback function that has a comment. I could be using the arrow function. This is fine too. You know, like uh, this is the comment HTML. And then let's see if this works. Okay. So this is the comment coming back, right? Um, so this one here is kind of similar to this approach. Here I'm using the Ajax. Uh, the Ajax function, I pass the URL, I pass the data, I pass the type here. If I know exactly what type I want, instead of going to the Ajax, I'm just going to go to the get. So this one here, I could have actually rewrote this to use something like this. I don't want to do it by like post like that. Okay. So URL and then the function to handle that request like that. Right. And you, of course, you do more, but you can have those. Uh, you can you know do each one of these by themselves like this, or I can call the same Ajax and I use here type will be a get instead of the post, and then do exactly the same as do here. But I'm just doing a simple get, so you call the get function directly, has the destination, and then the data coming back goes right into this variable, and then use it right in here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load add to this comments. Um, up here called comments, and then the HTML. We're going to set the comments HTML to that tag, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I don't know, I'm not sure what happened. I'm basically overwriting. I should probably call the um, the blog post here. Not sure what that's for. Uh, I don't have, I don't remember why I put that there, but we'll see. So this will, will load if I call it. If I don't call it, then nothing happens, right? So what I'm saying is this. So if I have that function and then I can call the function right away, loads comment like this, you can see right there, right? It loads it, it adds all the comment that I have earlier. If I add something to it, okay, it appends to that list, right? It keeps what I had before. And then if I add something to it, it just keeps appending to the list and keeps growing, okay? So you can see that it's kind of useful in a way. What if like, you know, if you share this link with on the website and a lot of people are coming to your site and they can keep posting, right? So when you do that, then how do you know if, somebody post some data or not, um, you know, so what you can do is you can fire this function um, at a certain interval so that it will load new content every time. If a user A comes in here, they make some posts, user B comes in here, and then it keeps loading that for you. So what you can do is this. I'm going to say set interval. This is the interval function. It takes a arrow function or a callback function here. 
and then you can set a second. Let's just say it every two seconds, okay? Every two seconds, this function fires. What happens in here? I load a few comments. So if I put the comments in here like this, and if I turn that off, okay, so you can see two seconds, boom, right? And then two seconds, it, ke it keeps firing that every two seconds uh, all the time. So that if a user, so let's say if I copy this link and I go to um, another site, um, let's see if I can load another browser over here. Okay, so let's say I have this link over here and the user comes in here, all right? Boom, two seconds, okay? And let's say I'm a user B and so whatnot. So I post something here, um, you know, uh, Joe, and then hi there, something like that. I click submit, boom, right? It posts right there. And then if I don't do anything, it keeps, you know, adding that automatically. So you can see how you can, you can make this for your blog site. That's what this means. Every two seconds, it reloads that. And, you know, it, it reloads, it replaces everything here you have with the new data, if there's any new content. Uh, what if I did not have this common display? For example, I showed that here, right? What if I turn that off like this? Okay, so now, boom, data shows up. But when I ask something, you know, and then the comment is not shown there until it reloads later, right? So the other user will also have something common coming in. Let's say I back to like Jake, how do you, and I post that, and then it waits a couple of seconds, and then boom, there it is, shows up everywhere. Whoever have access to the site can actually see the data. And then if there's nothing changes, then it reloads that and replace it every time, which may not be so efficient, um, but at least that's how one ap approach you can do this. All right. So that is all for this one. And I guess the takeaway here is that using Ajax, um, using jQuery Ajax is much actually nicer than the XML HTTP request. Um, it does the um, you know method chaining here. You can chain these together here like this. Uh, well, not natural chaining, but you can use the actual Ajax function inside this Ajax. It's just a big object all the way here to here, okay, to here to here. Or you can go directly to its particular get. You know you have a lot of these like the get uh, put okay dollar um, post and then dollar that. Uh, delete like that. Okay, so these are the four common ones. Um, you can do the one at a time, or you can just use this Ajax function and change the type to post, put, delete, get. Okay, and you supply the URL here, and then you lo load successful or not. Okay, so this success function right here, this is part here goes right inside the second parameter as you can see. Okay, so well thank you so much. If um, you have any questions, let me know. I will share the code on uh, Blackboard also so you can take a look at it. Otherwise, thank you and I will see you next time.